class is going to be on alarm fine-tuning. This would be, for example, a completed system that's been running for a period of time and there's a space temperature alarm that's been an annoyance going off way too often and we want to figure out how to eliminate that type of problem. So to start, in this example, we're just using my office. The alarms uh, over here on the right-hand side are showing that we have two critical alarms and one is a low space temperature alarm on the existing furnace. We're going to use this point and this alarm extension because we know it's been a nuisance. Um, opening that with just a double click we can see already right here on May 10th this alarm's gone in, in and out of alarm 54 times which is a fairly large portion of times. Uh, we don't we don't want something doing this you know every night or every morning or even once a week if it's not uh, if it doesn't need to be done. So on these alarm records, this is how you would track this alarm extension down. You want to look for the source. So in this case, it's local, station, slot, on down the list, and we're looking for the existing furnace and alarm low space temp point, and then there's an alarm extension on there. I'm going to just take that point and copy and put it into a notepad file really quick. That way I can remember where it is, because once I click away from here, it'll be hard to remember that. So over here in the tree, <clears throat> and you'll have to look at what you're logging, your login name. Many times your login name won't have a tree on the left-hand side. I'm using programming software. The web version of this would look very similar, uh, except you wouldn't see all the other buildings. Um, when you're looking at it that way, and you don't have a login password, you're going to be looking at purely just the graphical part of the screen and there really won't be a way to track down that alarm so you're gonna have to log in with a level that allows you to uh, look for those alarms what we were looking at there was under again existing furnace points low space temp so let's go under here under existing furnace points low space temp and as we open that you're gonna see there's an alarm extension there so we'll double click that alarm extension and this is what's generating what we were just looking at on the console. So in this case this one was going off way too often. Uh, you saw 54 times there. Um, I've already gone through and made the time delay change just recently which is why I decided to make this video. Um, I'm gonna briefly explain all the different pieces of this uh, alarm extension. The alarm inhibit is used to uh, essentially disable the alarm if you want, for example, in the middle of the night, you don't want an alarm to go off, we could tie that to a schedule to make the alarm not work for a period of time. Um, the alarm state, all alarms within the Niagara system are either normal or off normal. They're not normal in alarm like you would expect. Almost every system is normal and off normal. Time delay, the time delay is the delay from the time that the event occurs to when it's actually reported. So in this case, since it was a low space temperature alarm, it was set for 30 seconds. We'll just put it back to that. It was set for 30 seconds, and that is why my alarm was going off constantly. Um, in that case, in, in this case, I really don't care if this alarm happens in more than four hours. Um, it's just not that important of alarm if we're a little bit below space temperature. If it's been below space temp for four hours, then I probably know there's something wrong with the furnace, and that's a time to to take some more action. So in this case, just for making the low, uh, making the, the alarm frequency go down considerably, I'm going to make this a four hour delay. Make sure you hit enter. It would be the same in the web interface. You would just have to hit save. Time delay to normal. This is after it's gone back to normal. How long do you want before it resets and starts over again? Um, again, you'd want to you'd have a fairly uh, small time there because once it goes to normal, um, it seems really strange if you put the, the building to normal or the room to normal and then the alarm doesn't clear for a half an hour. seems a little bit uh, odd. So we try and keep that short, but the time delay to go into alarm a lot longer. Uh, the alarm enable, too off normal. That's all that does is the alarm's enabled. If I uncheck this right here, that alarm won't do anything. Essentially, it just disables the whole option. Uh, source name. This is one that seems to be a lot of confusion. Uh, it's just a short way of writing out an actual name. So if I wanted to make my source name Furnace or Ryan's Office, for example, I could just type in Ryan's Office. But if I want it to be 
you imagine big systems with hundreds of zones, that's a pretty inefficient way to do this is go in and type that every time. So parent.parent.parent.displayName, what that's doing is since it's entered here, that's what we're looking at is this low space temp, parent1, parent2, parent3, and I want the display name for that. So since I use this little bit of code here, it's going to come out and say existing furnace. So when we go back to look at our alarms, that's why we see existing furnace right here because of the parent dot parent dot parent and that's what's showing the source for that alarm so going on down the list here to off normal text that again is going to show you what you see over here on the right hand side so you may want it to say uh, you know some pump alarm or high space temperature alarm or you may want it to just say in alarm and return to normal um, there, there may not be a need for a whole bunch of explanation on that um, as we go down the list, same thing. It's going to display what happens when it returns to normal. So as it returns to normal, you'll see it come back here and say, battery test passed. So, you know, at one point we had a battery test fail, and then it went back to a battery test pass. So that's its current state is passed. As we go down to the bottom here, the, really the only other thing to look at here is the alarm class. And the alarm class, uh, in most systems, we only have set up for default alarm class and a critical alarm class. Critical alarm is set up to go to pagers and email, and default alarm class is just logged, and it's in the system. If you look at the alarm console, they're there, but we don't take any critical action on it. A low space temperature, a high space temperature, a high supply temp, those are all examples of default alarms. A critical alarm would be a free stat, a fire alarm, a smoke detector going off, something like that would be a critical alarm that I'd want to be emailed on. Okay, and then the final thing I want to look at is the off normal logarithm. The off normal logarithm is showing when this alarm is going to actually take place. So, in the case of uh, these enumerated points right here, there's only a couple of values that this, this uh, point can take on. So, uh, currently it's disabled, enabled, normal, and active. Uh, we only want the alarm extension to go off when the, it's an active alarm. Um, so down here you would just select the only item you want it to be enabled on is active. Now if you had a boolean alarm or an on off or a numeric alarm you may want your alarm to be active when say it's above 80 degrees or below 60 degrees. Um, you'd have a few more options in here to make those kinds of alarm transitions. Um, but that is the last item for this. I hope it's cleared up how the alarm extension works. Uh, please contact Woodman Controls if you have any questions.